Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Sammy Guru Podcast. This is episode number six. My name is Jeff Springer, and with me is my co-host, Tori. Tori, say hi. Hey, how's it going? And uh, we are back this week, ready to talk about a lot of device stuff. So today's episode is going to be full of basically two things. We're going to be talking about uh, our impressions of the devices from Unpack. Tori and I both have been using the Galaxy Watch Ultra now for a little bit. Tori's had it a little bit longer than me, so he has a little bit more feel for battery life and stuff. So we'll get some detailed thoughts there. Uh, I'm going to talk about the other devices that I've been using, the Fold, the Flip, the Buds 3 Pro. Uh, I'm almost done with the Flip 6 and making my review, so then I might pass that on to Tori and let him use it. I have a secondary SIM because I told him I would do that, and he can give us some thoughts on the Flip 6 because he's never used a foldable. So I'd be curious to see what he has to say about that. Uh, And then we're going to talk about One UI 7.0. There's been a lot of stuff. If you guys follow me, you know I've been making videos on this all week. I really didn't want to have to make videos on One UI 7.0 because I was trying to work on the foldable stuff, but apparently Samsung is ready to push that out the door. So they're making me work overtime for this week <laughs> anyway. But uh, before we get into the Samsung stuff, as always, Tori, how was your week? Uh, week has been busy, um, you know, kind of like back to work, uh, doing some uh, optional um, trainings, paid. Uh, you know, teachers don't really make all that much. Uh, but yeah, um, other than that, uh, I saw Wolverine and uh, Deadpool last night. Um, no spoilers. And, I'm yeah, going, yeah, I'm yeah. going to see it tonight. No spoilers. 10 30 p.m. with my wife. Uh, <laughs> we got lucky enough to get, you know, last minute babysitting services because this is such a exciting movie. It is. Uh, I just snagged some seats. Pretty much all the showings were sold out until 10 30 when I tried mm-hmm. to snag seats around lunchtime today. Uh, Nicole really wanted to go. Obviously, she really wants to go because she does not like to stay up super late she's a she's an early sleeper these days um but she's like yeah 10 30 she's like i'll go see this one at 10 30 so right. that must mean that it, she's really excited about this particular movie because i <laughs> don't think i've gotten her to see a movie after nine o'clock in in several years so i'm super excited about that this is also the first time tori and i saw a movie last weekend together yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's the first time that i've seen two movies like back-to-back weekends <laughs> probably in like good. seven or eight years <laughs> Tori and I saw uh, Twisters, and uh, it was really good. Did you did you enjoy it, Tori? Yeah, I did. We got twisted. We did. We got <laughs> twisted. It was a great, a great movie. And actually, I was incredibly surprised by the plot. I thought it was going to be too. like a, I thought it was going to be like a copy paste, you know, just with new actors and like an updated roles for the different actors. But it's actually a, a, quite a different movie. I mean, even though it has some callbacks to the original, the plot is substantially different. So, if you like the original Twister. And you haven't seen it, I would recommend it. It was a really good movie. We saw it late last night, uh, late on Friday last week. After talking about it on the podcast, yeah, <laughs> yeah we were actually. talking about. I was talking about how much I wanted to see it. Uh, we went and saw the movie. So I'm actually getting out there to do some stuff. Uh, in other podcast news, too, personal and podcast, we got a new table here, which you guys oh, will get yeah. to see next week. Uh, I ordered a what they call a professional podcast table from <laughs> this website called PodcastTables.shop. Very aptly named website because they sell podcast tables. What a great name. That's definitely what you can find there. Um, And it's really nice. It's got like multiple different panels for each uh, person. It's got outlets for you to plug in your laptop and all that good stuff. So we're really excited to have this. And next week uh, we'll finally bring you guys some video and I'm going to do my best attempt, but I promise that as we go over the next few months, the quality of the video is going to just get better and better. So I got some great ideas uh, I was telling Tori about some of that earlier. So we'll have some really good stuff coming on the video front as as things move along. When do the students come back, Tori, for you to start teaching the students? Oh, my goodness. August 5th. August, August 5th. 5th. Yeah, so, so you're looking at, uh, oh, you've got a little more than a week. So they let you guys come back and do some PD pretty early, right? So you've mm-hmm. got about 10 days. Yeah. So you've got a whole other week of PD. That's good. You keep your sanity for another week until the kids come back. <laughs> and also they come back on a Monday. Is that right? Yeah. That's mm-hmm. good. Yeah, some yeah, of the Monday. districts come back on like Thursday. Yeah, you know, GCU right. does that now too. I don't like that because yeah, it's like, either. then it's like, oh, you only got two days and then it feels like you're okay. off again, but then you're not because you got to come right back the next yeah. week. I'd rather have a full week. Just rip the bandaid off. <laughs> rip the bandaid off. Get That's right what I like it. to do. <laughs> so let's do that. And let's yeah, actually let's get into it. the show. So let's talk Galaxy Watch Ultra yeah. initial impressions. So You've had it now for a whole week because yes, you got it. You got it last week, mm-hmm. right before we went to the movies. You went yeah, home yeah. and picked it up after the podcast. Mm-hmm. What do you it. think about? Let me just ask you about some various things, and then you can chime in, and then I'll kind of give my thoughts as well. Battery life is the first thing. Uh, so far, uh, the battery life has been uh, pretty solid. I think, like when I first got it, I don't even think I 
actually fully charged it for about at least three or four days. Um, and even then it was probably on 30 or 20% then. Um, it uh, it holds up pretty well uh, in terms of the battery life. Um, I haven't felt like I needed to charge it uh, very much um, in that front. That's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, I've also been very impressed with the battery life. Um, of course, being that I review devices kind of professionally after I had it for a day, I like turned on everything to see how much I could kill it. And you can kill it if you turn on everything. I turned on like continuous blood, uh, heart rate monitoring. So it's like all the time. Mm-hmm. I turned on like made sure the cellular was on like all the time. I did some various workouts and like tracked several workouts. You, you can kill it. Not in a full day though. Yeah, Even no. if you turn everything on, you're going to get more than a day. I would say if you turn everything on, you can probably get a good day and a half out of this watch. If you're just using it for notifications and like the passive heart rate monitoring where it's like every 10 minutes and not continuously, stuff like that. Um, and you're not using the GPS continuously because that drains the battery a lot. Yeah. I used mm-hmm. it for maps a little bit to try to do a little bit of a battery drain test. You could probably get four days out of this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you agree? Yeah. 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 Because I think they advertise, what, 100 hours? Yeah. Or something and like that. that's usually they overestimate total, but I think it's pretty close because four days yeah, is like too. 40 hour, four, four days is 96 hours. That's pretty close. I think if you're just using it, as I think most people do, like most people aren't going on like 10 mile runs yeah. and using the LTE all day, every day. And most people don't turn on the continuous, like every second heart rate monitoring, that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Most people aren't using the GPS all the time. So probably you could get three or four days out of this. I'm pretty impressed with it. It's definitely on par with my Apple Watch Ultra. So in the sense of battery life, which is things that a lot of people are concerned about, because since it's a much bigger watch, people are expecting big things from the battery life obviously yeah, <laughs> if you're going to wear a big watch like this on your wrist you want it to la- you want to get something out of it being bigger mm-hmm. and I, I think you do i think that's the main benefit over going with the regular galaxy watch 7 is because this is such a huge watch they're able to pack a big battery inside there yeah uh, now i did read from a bunch of people and i've only had full disclosure like i said Samsung put me through a very difficult time in this launch. <laughs> I just got the Galaxy Watch Ultra a little over 48 hours ago. I had to drive to a Best Buy in Tempe to get it, which is a long way from my house. And it's not too far from the office. I, I drove down there the other day and got it. But uh, I've only had it for about 48 hours. But I've heard from some people who have the Watch 5 Pro, which is Samsung's previous largest watch in terms of battery. That's about on par with what they get out of that. I, I used a Watch 5 Pro for a while, but I haven't compared them side by side yet Mm -hmm. um, because I just haven't had enough time to do it. I probably will dig out my watch five pro and play with it. But overall I've been very happy with the battery life as well. Would you agree with that? Uh, Oh yeah, uh, for sure. Um, I, cause I am coming from the galaxy watch four and it was just a very big difference in terms of battery life. And I think I just had like everything turned on on that watch. So I think like when I got this one, I was like, Ooh, I better not turn everything on because like I, I want to kind of enjoy uh, wearing it, especially like while I sleep. Um, and did you wear it while you sleep? Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, every single night so far. We'll talk about that a little bit more later, too, because I've tried to do it, too. I don't find it to be I mean, if I loosen it, it's a little comfortable, but it's really big on your wrist. Do you, have yeah, you found it, it uncomfortable at all? On the yeah. Wrist? Yeah. Honestly, um, I did it for the review, but I don't know that I would want to sleep with it full time on my wrist. Yeah, so what I do, uh, I like I first put it on. I was like, oh man, like it's kind of big and tight, and so I just kind of like loosened it up a little bit more, like the way I wear it. So kind of uh, goes up and down my wrist, like it's still in continuous contact because I have the heart rate uh, thing set for like every like ten minutes or so. Yeah, I think that's the default. Yeah, 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 uh, the default of it. Um, but yeah, like wearing it um, while I sleep, uh, I don't really notice it if I just kind of loosen it up a little bit, and it still gets pretty good. Um, tracking um, and it gives me like really good feedback on my sleep and some other suggestions of what I can do to get a better sleep score. That's awesome. Yeah. So I've, I've also found the sleep thing to be pretty good. I used it for the sleep apnea. Thankfully it didn't say I have that. Did you try the sleep apnea detection? Uh, uh, no, I have should, not. should try that. Has try sleep that. apnea detection, kind of see how that uh, works. Supposedly if you have the galaxy ring, which I was going to mention this later in the show, I don't have one yet because as with all my products, as I said, they all got delayed. My Galaxy Ring is being <laughs> yeah. delivered today. So it's probably on my porch while we're recording this here at the office. So I'll probably get it tonight. Supposedly, if you have the Ring and the Watch, which, again, we talked about this on one of the previous episodes, 
I don't really know why too many people would buy the ring and the watch. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm right. buying it because I review these things for a living. But if you're a regular person, I don't know why you would because they're kind of redundant. But yeah. apparently they work together to give you more accurate sleep tracking and also more accurate heart rate. And they improve the battery life of both devices. So oh. basically, instead of making the watch do all the work for certain biosensors, it offloads some to the ring and vice versa. Oh, so it's able that. to extend the battery life of your watch ultra and your Galaxy Ring. Not that people would be too worried about the Ring because it's supposed to get like weeks of battery life. Mm -hmm. But that might be a big deal for your Watch Ultra. And I, I heard this. I went back and watched some of the press releases Samsung made. And uh, this is something they talked about significantly. And so that seems like an interesting thing. I'll talk about the Ring next week after I've had a chance to wear it for a week. But that seems very interesting to me. Uh, going along with this, because we just kind of touched on it, what do you think about the overall comfort of the band and like the fit of the watch on your hand, not when you're sleeping, just in general. Like we have the Marine band. That's what this yeah. is called. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't tried the other ones yet. I ordered them because I'm going to kind of maybe give some thoughts on the other ones too. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I'll give you one you can try and we can give some thoughts on a later episode. But what do you think about the Marine band overall? Uh, so overall, I would say um, it's a little bit more comfortable than what I was used to with the Galaxy Watch 4. Uh, but at times I find like my wrist uh, either like being irritated by the band um, just from like the, the shift. You get like these little things, little yes. divots in your wrist. Mm -hmm. like you can see yep, mine yep, right yep, there. Right here. Yeah. yeah. All the way through. So. Yeah. So so uh, you, really have, uh, you will have divots just like based off the design uh, of the band. And I do have the active band, I think. And I want to try that. Uh, this week is kind of like because oh, you got the free band with the pre-order yeah wouldn't yeah, have that been nice if samsung had actually shipped my pre-order i could have got my free <laughs> band but instead i had to go to best buy and i had to pay 650 dollars outright for the entire full price of the watch oh, interesting story as an aside i want to get this in you guys can see my twitter for more info but apparently now if you try to trade in a device at best buy in store they want to fingerprint you wow. and i was like yeah no i'm not doing that i was going to trade in my galaxy watch uh, six classic or one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. One. Of, I have so many of the watches. I was going to trade one in so I don't have to pay full price because they had pretty decent trade in credit since Samsung didn't ship my order. And I went to trade it in when I went to pick up the watch ultra. They're like, yeah, you realize that we're going to have to fingerprint you. Right. And I'm like, no, well, you're not. I didn't know that. And they're like, well, then I can't sell it to you. I can't do the trade. I'm like, yeah, you can just sell it to me for full price because they're not taking my fingerprints. I don't know where they're storing them. Like, yeah, right. they don't tell you. I asked them, like, where are you going to store them? I mean, if you're going to store them somewhere secure, it's encrypted. That's one thing. But they didn't even have an answer. They're like, we don't know what we do with them. I was like, I'm not giving someone my fingerprints. Yeah, That's no. almost worse than giving someone your social security number. Exactly. Your fingerprints are 100% unique to you. And, like, there's a lot of things they could do with those. And I mean, not that they would do anything, but if they're not securely storing them, I don't know what partners they share them with. Mm hmm so I was like, oh, I'll just pay full price. So yeah. I ended up paying full price. For, <laughs> I paid full price for every single one of my devices. I didn't end up getting to trade anything in because Samsung didn't ship any of my stuff on time. Um, overall, I, I agree with Tori on the band fit and the comfort. It's it's pretty nice. Uh, I definitely have those little divots that he is talking about, but I don't find it uncomfortable. Also, I'm surprised like how small the watch kind of wears. I thought it would be like super uh, annoying to have such a massive watch on my wrist, particularly since... Uh, I usually wear either my Tudor Black Bay, which is a 39 millimeter regular watch, or my um, my old Galaxy watch was the Watch 6 Classic 43 millimeter, I think. Mm -hmm. Those are a lot smaller. And of course, I've worn the Galaxy, I mean, sorry, the Apple Watch Ultra as well, but it's actually even a little smaller than this in terms of it's 47 versus 49. Mm -hmm. I was a little worried about how big it would seem on the wrist, but it doesn't wear that big, honestly. Yeah, no, actually, I actually really appreciate the size of it. I think I'm able to see like a really good picture or display of information without yeah, having Yeah, the display to is really nice. I, I have it. to say, that's one of the best features of this uh, watch as well. Is the display the brightness on this? They three x the brightness over the previous yeah. The brightness watch line. is so great. I, it just pops. I, yeah. I just really for like, us in Arizona, yeah, it's, it's important it too because in the summer, like it's so bright outside. Like you need your phone and your watch, etc., to be really bright because if you if they're not, you're not going to see anything when you're outside here in Arizona. Like the direct mm -hmm. sunlight will will blind you. So you need yeah, a really will. bright display. Otherwise, it's going to look dim in the Arizona sun. Mm -hmm. So that's a really great feature. Uh, overall, I've been. Pretty happy with the wearability. Of course, Tori and I do have relatively large wrists, so yeah. full disclosure, <laughs> my wrist is like 7.25 or 7.5, and, and I, Tori's is a little probably a little bigger than mine, so his mm -hmm. is probably like 7.75, maybe be right around mine. Those are pretty large wrists, so we can probably pull this watch off 
and and not feel like it's too large. Now, if you have like a six six and a quarter wrist, yeah, I would not recommend getting this watch because it's going to look kind of strange. That's mm-hmm. just my personal opinion. Um, there's kind of a guideline of you know what size watch case you should wear versus your wrist size, uh, just so that it looks you know you know looks nice on your wrist. And yeah, I, I think this one looks nice for no. my my wrist size. It does. And like the titanium outlook just looks really, the build is really nice. nice. We got the same model in the end. Yeah. Uh, I actually ordered the white one from Samsung originally, but since they didn't ship it, uh, I decided to go with this one because I actually liked the look of it. Last week when we went to the movie, Tori showed me his and I took some pictures on the wrist and uh, I rethought my choice since I had a chance to kind of cancel my Samsung order since it wasn't <laughs> shipped. I was like, I'll just change my mind. Let me go ahead and get the one that's the titanium gray. And so that's the one that I ended up getting. I think this one's actually wearable in more scenarios. The white one, uh, it looks nice. And the reason I originally ordered it is because I ordered a white Z Fold yeah. 6, but I had to end up getting a black one from eBay because they didn't ship that either. So now I have a black fold and I have the titanium gray watch. And I think they look nice together. Uh, what about performance? Have you noticed? I mean, I haven't. Have you noticed any lag like navigating the interface on this watch? I, I think it's been super snappy. Oh, yeah. No, I have not um, had any uh, issues at all with the performance. Uh, I like I'm really actually blown away with the watch. Uh, I, I really like this product. Um, I like everything uh, like in terms of like the activity, um, like just how quick uh, notifications come to the watch. Heck, I think notifications comes quicker to the watch than it does my phone in some instances. Sometimes it does. And I yeah. wanted to talk about that for a second, though. Here's one thing that bothers me, and you might may not notice it. Sometimes, though, I, it, it doesn't bother most people. I've talked about this many times. So you can see Tori is actually, in this case, see, Tori is making a point that's opposite of mine. Because I talked about this in a video today. I find the notification mirroring, this is mainly because the phone doesn't send them. Sometimes I get a Gmail and then it'll show up, not just on the watch, but on the phone, like three minutes after, you know, if you look at the timestamp in Gmail, it'll say mm-hmm. like 328. Yeah. And I won't get it on the phone until 331. And then I won't get it on the watch. The watch one usually does come in faster than the phone. So I think this is more to do with Android's like, Android has battery saving kind of safeguards in place so that if you get a lot of notifications, and I get a lot because of yeah. all my social media, I get so many I get like five YouTube studio notifications like every two minutes. So, you know, my phone is like, Jeff, you got to stop getting notifications. So that's probably possibly why as well. Um, But sometimes then those don't get fully mirrored to my watch because they're not mirrored on the phone instantly. The only reason I notice it, and again, I'm, I'm as far away from being an Apple fanboy as you can be. Whenever I make this point, people are like, this guy's really an Apple fanboy. I am not. I don't want to use any Apple products. I'd rather use Samsung everything for my daily driver if it fits you know what i need Mm -hmm. but my iphone if you sit it next to the galaxy phone and you send a gmail the gmail will come in instantly on the iphone and then mirror to the watch instantly and then maybe three minutes later it'll show up on the galaxy phone now this is not necessarily samsung's fault i think this is a thing that's done at the android level so this is google's fault actually and it's been this way for a while but at the end of the day, in terms of reliability, once it comes to the phone, it definitely comes to the watch instantly. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. you know, the watch the watch mirroring works. It's just I think that there is something there with Android trying to save battery. Samsung did add a new feature in the Galaxy Watch Manager. I don't know if you noticed this as well, Tori. If you go into the Galaxy wearable app, I'll pull it up really quick. Next week we'll have video so you guys will be able to see all this. There's a help with the notifications page. Oh, and no, it actually no, shows no, no, no. you notifications that you didn't get. So people what? can see that I'm not actually lying. If you look here, take a look at this, not getting notifications on the watch. Look at all the ones that it actually oh, wow. failed yeah. huh. to send to me in real time. I so these are that. not ones that I'm making up. It's only certain apps, too. It's like Amazon Shopping, YouTube Studio, maybe some of the ones that I get super frequently. So mm-hmm. I think it has to do with this battery management. But Samsung is at least trying to mitigate this and trying to help people figure out why they're not getting them. But I do notice that when I do get one on the phone, it comes to the watch instantaneously. Mm-hmm. So that's something I want to talk about uh, just because it's something that has always bothered me about Android as a whole, not Samsung. And so uh, let me know if anybody else has experienced it. I do think it has a lot to do with the volume of notifications you get. Because you haven't noticed this at all, have you, Tori? Probably. Yeah, no, no, yeah. not at all. Yeah, see, Tori hasn't noticed it because he probably gets a reasonable number of notifications. Maybe yeah. the phone's not mad. <laughs> and then, you know, it doesn't it doesn't have any problems trying to save battery life. Um, what about the digital rotating bezel? Let's talk about that for a second. So. A lot of people were outraged by the lack of the physical mm-hmm. rotating bezel. We we both kind of talked about this briefly uh, about it on, on one of the podcasts when we were previewing Unpacked. Yeah. We were a little disappointed that they didn't have the physical rotating bezel. 
But after having lived with it for a few days, I can honestly say I find the digital simulator rotating bezel mm. to be actually pretty fantastic. Mm. Um, you, it's not as great as as physical, but um, the digital simulated one, you actually get haptic feedback as soon as you go to each screen, right? Mm -hmm. Like it clicks. Yeah. So you know that you're going to the next screen and it gives you pretty hard haptic feedback. So I don't actually mind it. I thought I would hate it. I would rather have the physical one. Because yeah. I don't see why they can't put a physical one on here. Yeah, There's yeah, a lot either. of space, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not like this is a super slim watch where it's like, oh, well, fitting a physical rotating bezel would make this watch way too thick. It's already massively thick. <laughs> yeah. So they definitely could <laughs> do it. Go home. Yeah, they could do it, right? Mm -hmm. But but what do you think? What do you think about the digital rotating bezel? Yeah, uh, I mean, initially, uh, right out the box and putting it on my wrist, I, uh, I there's at least three to five times um of first use i went for the bezel to rotate i was like oh wait there's i no tried that a few times bezel. too because yeah. it looks like it right yeah 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 it like it just like the like galaxy it. watch 4 mm -hmm. classic or 6 classic that i had before it just looks like you could just pull it and just like sh -sh -sh -sh. and it's like uh, uh, it doesn't uh, work not yeah. in here uh but then i tried the you know the digital uh bezel um but i find just swiping back and forth to be easier to me that's what you um, told me last week at the yeah. theater yeah mm -hmm. tori told me he likes just swiping on the screen and you know it, it is it is strange getting used to the digital one and i will say until you get used to it i tried to force myself to do it since it's something new kind of just for the review i will say that sometimes you'll accidentally go one page too far yeah that's like what if I was you're finding. looking for one of the quick settings on the right like if i'm looking for my health overview i might go one too far and it'll take me like to the multi-sport menu which mm -hmm. i didn't want to go to and i have to go back so you may find, as Tori said, that swiping left and right just on the screen is going to work better for you for precision purposes because yeah. you might end up passing up the page that you want. And I certainly understand that, and I do do agree on that. But it's not as bad as I thought. I yeah. thought it would be like something that would make me dislike the watch because I really liked – that was one of my favorite things. But I do think Samsung should have kept it because it's one of those things that are uniquely Samsung. Yeah. And all mm -hmm. those people who are like, hey, you're copying the Apple Watch, blah, 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 blah. They wouldn't be saying that if they had added, kept the physical rotating bezel, because that's something that is very much uniquely Samsung. Yeah. The other thing that I really would have liked to see, which they didn't add, although if they had added this, they definitely would have been, you know, angry. People would have been <laughs> even more angry about them copying Apple, is the rotating crown. Yeah. So they should have had know, a crown mm -hmm. that lets you navigate up and down. The Apple Watch has that, of course. Mm -hmm. But that would have been a great feature because it's really yeah, nice to been. be able to navigate vertically with the crown. In addition to the rotating bezel, if they had both, though, that would have been great. They no, need to I'm add, sure I think, physical rotating bezel and rotating crown with haptic feedback mm -hmm. for the Galaxy Watch Ultra 2, maybe yeah. next year. Yeah, no, for sure. I, um, I was at this uh, training and uh, another teacher, he had the uh, Galaxy Watch 3, and he was just like, I've been thinking about, like, updating and i saw uh at uh, samsung unpack that that watch are coming out and i and i saw you have it um does it rotate with the the little um orange button here and i was like ah no i no it doesn't <laughs> he was like ah all right and then he was like well what about the rotating bezel and he's like there's no rotating bezel he was like ah all right <laughs> yeah so, so me fast. <laughs> i think you know a lot of people do want that i've actually heard from a lot of people i just dropped a video today about the galaxy watch ultra yeah, uh, I was actually making a video where I was talking about the different things that they didn't put in there. You know, sometimes you got to make a video highlighting the problems because people should mm -hmm. know about them. I always get dislikes when I make videos about problems with a product. But like, I mean, you want me to do like continuously praise them all the time. I make Samsung content every day. If yeah. I'm just sitting here saying how great they are, everyone would know that I'm not being authentic. I'm just trying to sell you stuff. Mm -hmm. and that's not what I'm trying to do. So, no, I mean, I try to always make, you know, as much as I can. Uh, a fair and balanced kind of overview of the products. What about the pinch gestures? Have you tried the pinch gestures? At I all? have not tried the pinch. So gestures. the pinch gestures are interesting. Um, it'll kind of suggest to you to use them when certain things pop up. One of them where it suggests this to you is when you set a reminder or an alarm that I've used it a lot. Mm -hmm. When the alarm goes off, instead of having to tap your watch to actually do it, you, you can just pinch in the air and oh. it turns off your alarm. No, seriously. Yeah, isn't that cool? So huh. you can enable this. It actually will walk you through it if you encounter a situation where it can be used. If you take a call on the watch, mm -hmm. you can actually do pinch to answer the call oh. and pinch to actually hang up the call as well. Yeah, literally just pinch. Yeah, yeah. You can also use it for music controls if you want to. It's pretty cool. So you can pinch to pause, pinch to play, mm -hmm. that stuff. There's a lot of air gestures that can be used. Unfortunately, 
this is another thing that they quote unquote borrowed from Apple. Oh, this yeah. is also something that came <laughs> to the Apple Watch earlier this year. But I'll be honest with you, this is a really nice feature for certain things, like particularly dismissing like reminders and alarms. Because mm -hmm. you know, doing this full time as a creator, I, I set a lot of reminders for myself throughout the day because I forget stuff. Yeah. And I don't always want to have to go and tap the screen on my phone or the watch to dismiss it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh yeah, I need to send this email. Just pinch the air and then that's gone. And then I send the email and I don't no, have to yeah, go yeah. interact with the screen. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, a couple of other things that I want to talk about. These are some of the things I put in my problems video. You may not even know about them. Do you remember uh, on the previous watches? I don't even know this. You used to be able to take your watch and sit it on the back of your phone mm -hmm. and wirelessly charge the watch on the phone. I did not. Did know you know that. about that one? I did not. So that's called reverse wireless charging. Mm -hmm. And they actually removed it from this watch. It doesn't Wait, work anymore. <laughs> yeah. It worked on the old watches, I guess, because I think it's probably partially because of the, on the ultra, the watch is so such a large battery yeah. that the power draw from your phone might be a lot. They oh, couldn't do it. Um, I think though a lot of regular consumers, I was thinking about this, they probably didn't know it was gone, so they're not yeah. going to miss it. Um, I, I mean, put it, it sounds cool. I would definitely use it if it's yeah, still there. They should that's one of those features that we talked about before, like Samsung should really publicize to regular people. They don't necessarily put it in their ads, but it's an amazing feature that people would love. Whenever I show, whenever I had the old watches, and it works with your buds too. Like if mm. you set your buds in the back of your phone, yeah. that still does work too. Oh, okay. Well, I'll so if you get the buds three get, pro, then you just take it, sit it right on the back of your phone, and you're good to go. Whenever I show that feature to someone with an iPhone, like that's one of the features that gets people like, hey, maybe I could leave iMessage, yeah. and maybe I could stop using AirDrop. To get some real innovation like that. Because, you know, mm -hmm. people can identify with like, you know, you're out and your earbuds are almost dead and you want to keep listening to music. Well, okay. And just plop the case on the back of your phone and it'll charge it up. And then you can drop the buds in there and get some, you know, a couple hours extra charge. Mm -hmm. That's a really useful feature. No, I agree. So, so it does work now in the buds. But uh, anyway, what you can do now, though, so you might want to know this. Instead of doing reverse wireless charge, if you don't have a power brick with you and you need to charge your watch, yep. as long as you bring the cable... You can plug the cable into your phone's USB-C no, port, seriously? and then you can charge it using the puck. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I showed that off in the video. That's very useful. It's not yes. as good as reverse wireless charge. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, then you don't need the cable at all or a brick, mm -hmm. but at least you don't need a power brick. Yeah. You just throw your watch cable in your backpack with you, mm -hmm. and if it, it gets low throughout the day, you just plug it into your phone, and it doesn't, you know, it's not going to drain too much battery on your phone. You know, if you want to get a little bit of juice for the watch, because mm -hmm. 15 minutes will give you like 20% on the watch, yeah, enough yeah. to get home for sure. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. Um, the action button. I want to talk about that for a second because. Is that what the orange button is? Yeah. The action button. Um, it annoyed me the very first bit of time I had it because I kept trying to use it as a back button because <laughs> it's got a three button setup. And the one mm -hmm. that's in the middle, of course, even though I know that prior Galaxy watches like the Watch 6 Classic had multi button setups, you're naturally going to gravitate to the middle one. It doesn't matter how many times you've used huh, a really? Samsung watch. I, I gravitate towards the bottom one. Did you? All the time. Yeah. Well, that was the correct one. So yeah, no. just, <laughs> Tori just, uh, he, he uh, passed the Samsung quiz of which is the correct button. But uh, this one, you know, it's like orange. And I was like, oh, orange or pretty. I'll press mm -hmm. it. But that's not what you want to press. And unfortunately, the thing that bothers me about this, they're going to fix it, I think. Um, or definitely a third party software developer will fix it. You can only map this to like three different actions. That's the one thing I don't like. Oh. It can only be stopwatch, mm -hmm. Samsung Health, uh, and there's one other one. I don't remember what it was, but there's only a couple different things you can map it to. You can stopwatch, flashlight, water lock, and Samsung Health. Oh, so you can't use it to open like any specific app that you want. Yeah. And a lot of people want to be able to customize it to open any app that they want, mm -hmm. like maybe their favorite health app, like Strava, yeah, like or yeah. or even just a random app, like a social media app. You know, why not? want to do that there's, you know there's nothing wrong with that so i think they'd be nice if they'd add that customization because samsung's all about customization mm -hmm. um and so that's something i would definitely like to see them do yeah, it's kind of funny you say stopwatch uh, every time i look at the side it gives me a stopwatch vibe. does it it does yeah. kind of look like that you're right mm -hmm. so that's actually funny enough the original default Samsung Health, I mapped it to the stopwatch because that finally made me stop pushing it to use the back button. Because I was like, no, that's the stopwatch because it looks like one. Yeah, and now it worked. And I stopped pressing it on accident to go back. So, yeah, I mapped it to the stopwatch. That's what I'm using it for. But uh, I would probably use it to open a different app. I'd probably use it to open my music app because mm, I use that yeah, a lot. Quick access. Um, yeah, quick access. Or maybe even Google Fit instead of Samsung Health because sometimes I use that uh, instead of Samsung Health. I use both back and forth just to... Do comparisons, obviously, mm -hmm. but I might map it to a different fitness app. And I know some people want to do that. 
What about step tracking? Have you noticed that it's very accurate? I noticed yesterday it seemed a little suspicious. I, I don't want to say yet because I haven't had it for a full week. And this is not a full review today. I'll have a full review. Probably next week I'll give some more in-depth thoughts. But uh, And maybe I'll write up one on the website. And Tori will write up something too. But um, I noticed yesterday it said I had like 7,000 steps. Mm -hmm. And I was mostly sitting in the chair. <laughs> so I don't know if I believe that. I mean, I walked around and did some stuff. But I was mm -hmm. in the office working. So I don't know. Have you noticed anything with step tracking accuracy? Uh, yeah, I have. So like I've um, taken it to the gym at least four times now. Um, and while like being on the treadmill, it was definitely giving me a little bit more steps than what I thought I had originally taken. And also along with the the distance as well, the distance was because um, I started it. Uh, at the same time I started the treadmill, the distance was a little bit behind. But what I actually did like about it was uh, after I was done with the workout, because I, I did the treadmill uh, exercise in Samsung Health, uh, it asked um, about how accurate or like what was what was ever the distance that was recorded on the treadmill. And, uh, and it's trying to uh, align or I was trying learn. to calibrate yeah, yeah, the calibrate. watch. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to do, like I said, that's why I said I've only had it for 48 hours. I need to actually get in and do some workouts. I did some light walking. I have a walking pad in the office. I did that yesterday. I don't think I took 7,000 steps. I probably did like a mile, <laughs> which is not 7,000 steps. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll have to do some actual workouts next week. And this weekend, actually, I'll go to the gym, uh, to Lifetime Fitness, and I'll have to track some of my workouts at the treadmill and see mm -hmm. how that's going. Because I'm kind of going to the gym like four or five times a week now as I try to lose weight. So once I get a chance to use it for a full week, next week I'll give some more thoughts. But it does seem to be overestimating steps. You would yeah, agree? Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, even like last night I uh, I took the watch off. And then like after midnight, you know, you know, like a reset. And like I may have picked it up like once or twice, but I looked. It already said I, I, I had already taken 136 steps. And I was like, I haven't, haven't <laughs> did anything. Uh, so, yeah, no, uh, I do think the steps are off because I've hit my step goal like every single day since wearing the watch. And I don't think I'm taking that many yeah, steps. Yeah, I don't I don't believe that either. Mm -hmm. I mean, it says I'm like a lot of quite a few steps, like 4000. Again, I've been sitting here. So I think it's maybe helping me out a little bit and reaching my goals too much because mm -hmm. I'm not actually reaching them. And that yeah. makes me feel like I'm, you know, doing something I'm not, which I don't necessarily want. So, mm -hmm. I think that's mostly what I had to say. Are there any other thoughts about the watch so far that you want to add? I, I'm going to have you write up something for the website, of course, mm -hmm. but anything you want to add today for the podcast? Uh, yeah. I mean, just overall, like the initial presentation, like if you were to get the watch, um, the the initial default of the face is just very nice, um, is uh, very attention getting, very poppy. I really like it. Um, and also it has like this compass feature that's like uh, one of my favorites, too, because sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, where is north? Um, but this will accurately tell you here. Uh, another surprising feature that I didn't think I would like or use because it wasn't on other watches, but the night mode. Um, I actually really like it. Um, like when I'm asleep because uh, I'm wearing the watch, um, I'm able to uh, still tell the time. Um, and just kind of look at things and, and it shows up really nice. Like it's not like overly bright, um, but it, it is a nice appreciation to have that feature. I yeah, like. I didn't actually talk about that because I'm so used to that had been on the Apple Watch, which I used for a while. But that is new to Galaxy Watches. And it's a great feature because when you're outside at night or if you're in a dark place, even and just inside your room, you don't have to be outside. Uh, and I've noticed the auto on that is actually quite accurate. That's something I was going to talk about in my full review because mm -hmm. the Apple one sometimes will trigger when you're actually like not fully dark it's like dusk and i don't want that necessarily i still like it to be on the regular but this one really triggers like when it's just when i feel like it's dark enough that it should be on it turns on so yeah, the ambient light sure. sensor is doing a really good job with detecting that so i highly recommend if you get the galaxy watch ultra there's no need to turn the night mode on or off manually like some people feel like some people have said on the apple watch they feel like they have to because it's not good at detecting i think the galaxy watch does a good job of detecting yeah, yeah. No, it does so overall i mean those are our initial thoughts i mean they were pretty long initial thoughts for 30 yeah. minutes. So <laughs> basically, it's pretty close to a full review, but I want to use it a little bit longer. Tori will write up his review for the website, and then I'll probably do mine on the video. That way, we have a couple of different perspectives from the website. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's very exciting as well. Another thing I want to mention, too, as we uh, transition to talking about the Flip, the Fold, and the Buds 3 Pro, uh, we have a full-time writer starting at Sammy Guru on Monday. Yeah, yeah. So we are going to have a ton more 
news content. We're going to be covering Samsung from all angles uh, every single day, news tutorials, etc. Because I can only do so much, obviously, myself uh, between the video content, the podcast, the newsletter. I do everything. Uh, and I'll be kind of announcing and introducing him over on Twitter. So if you guys want to learn more about our new staff writer, you guys can check out Twitter uh, on Monday. And I'll kind of give a little bio of him and stuff. But uh, he's a guy who's been working in the space for a long time. And we're pretty excited to have him. Eventually, yeah, yeah. he will probably make an appearance on the podcast. But Tori and I got to figure that out because he is not in our time zone. So we've yeah. got to like, figure out <laughs> when we will do that. Because you know that's always tough when you've got a guest who's like, 12 hours ahead or behind you. you got to figure that out. But we'll, we'll probably figure it out. I think yeah. we can figure it out. Yeah, Tori doesn't mind staying up late sometimes no, on, not. <laughs> on a Friday, so that's fine. Okay, so let's uh, transition to talking about the Fold, the Flip, and the Buds 3 Pro. And I'm going to probably go in-depth on more of these next week, but I just want to give some initial thoughts about them um, since you know I've had these for a little while. The Fold I've only had for now three days. Last week on the podcast, I said for sure I would have one by Monday. That turned out to be a lie, you know, like on the Mori po- with that. Yeah, on the Mori Povich show. Yeah, no. we determined that, that was a lie. That was a lie. So yeah, it didn't it come till Tuesday case. morning, <laughs> thanks to the uh, whole CrowdStrike cyber thing. Messed up UPS. Messed up a lot of people's fold orders. Uh, but quickly, I'll talk about the fold first. I've had it for three days. I've made some videos on it. My initial thoughts on the build are: it's nice but it's still too narrow for me personally to use on a daily basis. The cover screen just still isn't wide enough. I mean, if you compare this to the S24 Ultra, it still doesn't feel anything like a traditional slab phone, which is, I like the width of the S24 Ultra and I'm very used to using it. Um, Could I force myself to use it? Yes, but is it my preference over the S24 Ultra? The answer is no. I will mention one thing that I think I was wrong about somewhat. (laughs) The camera quality is better than I thought. Um, I don't give Samsung a pass for not putting a better sensor in here because they should have put better hardware in here. It's basically been three years since they really upgraded the camera. That's unacceptable, yeah. um, the hardware. But the software processing isn't that bad as I thought. Uh, and the new ultra wide is an improvement. So while you know I really bashed the camera before, and a lot of that's, I don't, I don't take a lot of it back because they should have put new hardware in here. The software processing does seem to be improved to the level where you at least get same quality as I would say. Someone asked me for a comparison. It's on the level of like a Galaxy S24, mm-hmm. not an S24 Ultra. I'm talking about the base model, which definitely doesn't have the same camera as the Ultra. But it's it's on the level of like a Galaxy S24 camera, and I think that's pretty good. I mean, it's still a shame that a $1,900 phone, though, doesn't have the best camera that you can possibly get for your flagship lineup. Right. I think that's a real shame for sure. It's $100 uh, more. <laughs> exactly. They charge you $100 more, and... For $100 more, I really don't know what it is you got. I mean, it is thinner and lighter, but, you know, it's it's not like it's a rev- – it, it, I thought it would be revelatory. It's not. It definitely feels lighter in my pocket, but it's still definitely thicker than a slab-style phone. And so at the end of the day, I, I really like this. If you are a foldable fan and you're a you know, Galaxy Z Fold fan, I think you'll appreciate the upgrades. But if you're an average consumer who uses a foldable and you're not an enthusiast, you shouldn't upgrade from a Fold 5 to this. And and maybe not even a Fold 4 unless, you know, you've had like some build quality issues or something. Your Fold 4 is like falling apart. I don't know that I would necessarily upgrade. But if you're an enthusiast, I think you'll appreciate the extra width. The boxy design, you know, is is nicer. The aspect ratio on the inside is nicer. Uh, they did some nice things. And, of course, it's got all the Galaxy AI features that are built in, which we talked about. Um, I played with sketched image a little bit. Those are all going to come to the old phones, though. So that's like nothing super, nothing super important about that because you'll get those later. Like, check out this watercolor of me. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, yeah. That's nice. So I did some different things with the portrait mode and I did some other things. One thing I found out, which a lot of other outlets publicized, is you can't use the sketched image to like defile people's faces. So if you try to draw graffiti oh. or something on someone's <laughs> face, it won't let you. It says cannot generate image due to the location of the drawing. Um, and so you can't do that, which is kind of funny. Uh, I was trying to just kind of play around to see what it would let me get away with. But all those Galaxy Eye features are mostly going to come to the Z Fold 5 and the S24 okay. line. So it's not like you need to rush out and buy this phone for the Galaxy Eye stuff. It's going to come anyway. The Z Fold, uh, sorry, the Z Flip 6, on the other hand, initial impressions there. Uh, this phone kind of blew me away, honestly. Um, you know, it seems like an iterative upgrade, like the Fold uh, 6 as well. 
But there's a couple of things about this phone that blew me away. One, the crease on this phone is much less noticeable than the Z Flip 5. Not necessarily when you look at it when it's open, but when you look at it closed, the off axis, the way the reflections blend in, and not only that, but the way it feels when you touch the screen, it doesn't feel as significant. You can actually feel it, Tori, in the middle yeah. there. It doesn't feel he touched he flipped touched the flip oh, yeah. five before. Yeah. And you know, he said, you know, the crease is pretty noticeable. It's not as noticeable anymore. It's definitely there, but it's not as noticeable. But the other place where this blew me away, two things that are probably the most important things for most average users on a smartphone, the battery life is basically like is almost a an extra probably 12 hours worth of battery life compared to the Flip 5. Whoa, I really? used the Flip 5 last year as my daily driver for a few days. I couldn't get more than like 14 hours of daily of regular use, not screen on time, 14 hours just using it. So I like take it off the charger at 8 a.m. It'd be dead by like, you know, 10 p.m. Easy. So you couldn't have like a night if you were going out or something, you couldn't yeah. use it. But like the Flip the Flip 6, like I used it for a few days and like I would sometimes I work till 2 in the morning. I took off the charger at like 8 a.m. And I looked at like 2 in the morning, like the first day I had it, it was like at 35%. I don't know. And I was like, that's I, that could get me all the way through the up. next morning. I could charge it on lunch in lunch the next day if I needed to. Uh, that's huge. You know, getting a, a day and a half instead of not even a full day, that's massive. So the battery improvement is huge on this phone. And the camera improvement is just massive. I mean, this thing had a camera last year that was just as bad as the Fold, maybe even worse because it's got a smaller profile to pack in that sensor. This one is definitely on the same level as the Z Fold 6, in my opinion. It's basically like a Galaxy S24 base model quality, but this one's also a lot cheaper. So I'm people are probably like, why are you saying the Fold's camera is not good, but the Flip's <laughs> cameras is good? They have almost the same quality. Well, this phone, the Fold costs almost two grand. Yeah. The other one costs a thousand. So when you double the price, my standards are going to go up. You mm -hmm. know, like the camera you give me for a thousand doesn't need to be the same one you give me for two thousand if I pay yeah. twice as much. Um, but I was blown away by this phone overall, like the build quality improvements, uh, the hinge is a lot nicer. Yeah, no, it is a lot thinner. It's sturdier. It's a lot thinner as well. Um, just overall, the usability of this phone, they've improved a lot of things. The cover display now has the quick replies on the cover display. Uh, it's got the auto framing for the camera and for video. So if you open and use this, like you use this to, to take selfies or take videos and stuff, It'll automatically frame you, like if you use it on the cover display. Mm -hmm. As you walk around, it'll automatically make sure you're centered in the frame. Uh, That's an exclusive feature to the Z Flip 6. It's not on the Fold or any other model. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it'll come to one because it's all about the cover screen on the Z Flip 6. I like this phone. Honestly, if if it wasn't so narrow, I could consider using this as my daily driver. Maybe even more so than the Fold, which is surprising. This one also, though, if you open it, it's almost the same width as the Fold is. Yeah. <laughs> which is why I don't use it as my daily driver because... The S24 Ultra is still like 60 to 70% wider than these phones. Mm -hmm. And so I'm probably still going to go back to that just because I'm a guy who appreciates the extra width when typing. Because yeah. I have fat fingers, you know. People are like, why can't you use it? Well, I have fat fingers and it's okay. Um, so Samsung's going to need to give me a wider cover screen on the Fold or make the flip wider if I'm going to use it as a daily driver. Um, supposedly... That Galaxy Z Fold 6 Ultra is supposed to be coming. <laughs> people are saying in October, man, that's going to make so many people angry. Mm -hmm. They just bought a $2,000 phone. Yeah. If they sell that in the U.S., <laughs> oh, man, the emails I'm going to get about how angry, the comments we'll get about how I'm angry people are, hot. <laughs> it's going to be really bad. People are going to be like, I just bought this phone for two grand. And then three months later, you release a phone that's miles better that I could have waited for and did yeah, my upgrade right. and got my trading credit on that phone. But now you're wasting my time making me get this particular phone. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't, I don't know what that's all about. Um, very interesting for sure. So we'll see how that plays out. If they do release it, a lot of people are going to be mad. Galaxy Buds 3 Pro. Let's uh, briefly talk about Buds 3 Pro for a second. Uh, I really like the Buds 3 Pro. I think you should get a pair, Tori. They oh, are still yeah, back. On they it. are still back ordered. <laughs> because of the recall that we mentioned. Yeah. And the issue, which I did discover myself, because, you know, since I review these things, I had to try to push the limits. Uh, apparently, the issue is if you try to change the silicone ear tips, they rip very easily. Uh, so I tried to change mine, like, just regularly. Samsung actually published a video about how to do it today. Oh, wow. To tell you that you must be doing it wrong. That's because they're not very well made. Yes. They're really not. <laughs> you're not doing anything wrong. They're just trying to tell you why they're ripping it's your all for your fault, but it's not because they recalled them. Obviously, why did they make yeah. that? I don't know why they made that video because 
they're not you're not selling them anymore. Why aren't you selling them? Yeah. It's because the, your tips are poorly made. I tried changing them and I ripped one easily. Jeez. You know, people are gonna be like, oh, you weren't careful enough. I don't need to be careful on any of my other earbuds. I've changed a million pair of earbud ear tips. Mm-hmm. I got like 30 pair from from reviewing them on YouTube. I don't need to be careful with any of them. I did this one just the same way I would do any other one. Just pluck it off, mm-hmm. try to put a new one on, and I ripped one. Um, so definitely be careful about that if you already have a pair. But if you don't, you can't get some till the end of August <laughs> because of this issue. The sound quality is amazing. I think it's on par with some of my more expensive headphones like the Bang & Olufsen's that are like almost twice the price. The Bang & Olufsen's are 400 bucks. Jeez. Um, the build, they feel a little cheapish, I'll, I'll be honest. They don't have a lot of weight in the hand, but they're earbuds, so you don't really want that. But if you compare the beard build quality sorry, to the Bang & Olufsen's, they're not really on the par there. But, I mean, that's the extra money goes to some of that finishing. They do feel like a little cheap plasticky, mm-hmm. but the audio quality is anything but cheap. They're amazingly good. The features are amazing. The noise cancellation, the active noise cancellation is fantastic. They've added some amazing features that integrate with your phone, your watch, nice. the whole Galaxy ecosystem. Uh, really impressed with the Buds 3 Pro. Uh, the Samsung case for the Buds 3 Pro, though, is trash, so don't buy that. Um, you'll probably end up scratching up the actual charging case, and it's really <laughs> hard to pull it out once you put it in there. So buy one of the third-party cases. I'm going to review some. I ordered some from Amazon from a couple different companies just because I'm too lazy to email them and ask them to send them for free. Yeah. That's one of the things I could get a lot of stuff for free, but sometimes if it's like a $20 item, I don't want to reach out to the company and write an email asking for it. Cause it's just a lot of work. And then you have to go back and forth and they're going to be like, Oh, well, where are you going to put the review? Is it going to be on the website or the YouTube channel? I'm like, ah, oh, just buy it. It's $20. Yeah. You know, not? people are like, you could get all this stuff for free. And a lot of it I could, but it's like, I just buy it. Cause it's a lot of hassle. Mm-hmm. So unless it's worth a lot of money, and I, you know, I don't want to spend a ton of money and I can get it for free and I'll do it. But for accessories, typically I just buy them because I can get them quicker and I can give you guys some feedback. So those are my thoughts on the Buds 3 Pro um, and the Z Flip 6 and Z Fold 6. Definitely have a full review next week. So you guys can stay tuned for that. Uh, it'll be coming out very soon. But before we uh, do get on to the next segment of the show, talking about One UI 7.0, we'll go ahead and take a break here to hear from the sponsor of today's podcast. Today's episode of the Sammy Guru Podcast is brought to you by our partners at Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile has premium wireless starting at just $15 a month. And right now, for a limited time, they have one of their best deals of all time, where all of their plans are just $15 a month. That means that you can get their amazing unlimited premium wireless plan for 50% off the usual cost. All of Mint Mobile's plans come with unlimited talk and text, nationwide coverage, and mobile hotspot included as well. The great thing about Mint is they are completely online. You don't have to worry about any in-store sort of overhead. They basically give you all the savings that they can by avoiding those costs. You can also get either an eSIM if you have a phone that supports that, like the Galaxy S24 Ultra or other modern Samsung phones. Or if you prefer a physical SIM or need one, they will mail one to you as well. The great thing about Mint is you save a ton of money over the big wireless carriers and they simplify your billing and also try to make sure that you have the correct plan for you. I've loved using Mint here in the Phoenix, Arizona area for almost the last two years. My family and I have switched over fully. We love their service. If you guys are interested in checking them out, go to trymintmobile.com slash Springer. The link will also be in the show notes if you'd like to click on it that way and sign up. This is a limited time offer for the uh, 50% off the unlimited plan where all of their plans are $15 a month. So take advantage today. All right. Welcome back, everybody, from that ad break. We are now going to talk about One UI 7.0 and all the massive leaks. Now, I've covered these in a bunch of YouTube videos, and Tori watched them. There are some interesting things that have come out. Last week, we talked briefly about these, but even more crazy things have come out since then. So almost all of the icons have leaked. Have you taken a look at the icon story? I know I showed off some of them in the videos. Uh, yes, I have. And, you know, I do have a few thoughts on those. Go ahead. What do you um, think about them? Yeah, so because um, I was like, man, you know, I don't even really, like, pay attention to the icons. And, you know, I don't really know if uh, other, uh, you know, average day consumers of Samsung products do. Um, but to me in the update, they seem, like, more colorful and poppy versus, um, like, I was looking at the gallery and the internet. um, And then I started reflecting. I was like, yeah, you know, they've been kind of consistent with each app having, like, a certain color and then just kind of having, like, um, you know, that color theme with some white here and there. So I think by adding color, at least in my opinion, will just kind of make things feel more poppy or vibrant. 
uh, to the Samsung feel, um, especially uh, when you're like first firing up the phone, maybe for the first time. I feel like consumers are really going to like that. And I like Tori's insight here because a lot of us don't like a lot of the Samsung fans seem to not like the gallery icon. I love the Internet icon, by the way. It's got like a like a nice blue with a teal ring around the planet. It looks good. The Internet icon is definitely their best. But the gallery icon, a lot of people don't like it because it looks like it's lifted from Apple. But it is a lot more colorful than the previous gallery icon. Mm -hmm. So in keeping with Samsung's new kind of goal of reaching, you know, Generation Z or whatever, <laughs> um, that probably will appeal to them because they yeah, like that kind so. of stuff. I think that's part of the reason they're going towards that is that a lot of the things that Apple does also appeals to Gen Z. And so Samsung's trying to get on that same bandwagon, maybe not necessarily copy Apple exactly, but use that same strategy to appeal to those users. Um, I think, you know, of all the icons, the gallery one's the one I like the least, mainly because I just like the color of the old one. And I've used Samsung so long, like that familiar, like whatever it is, pinkish, maroonish yeah, 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 color. Like that, yeah. What I, I saw someone did a concept on Twitter. I forgot who it was. It might have been Vitrox. Um I, I'm sorry if I messed up the designer's name. I'll put it in the show notes for sure. I, there's so many guys who do these and they all, I appreciate all their work. But uh, he had one where instead of having the multicolored flower, it was white icon, but had the pinkish gradient all on the flower, oh, just a single monochrome. It actually looked good and it looked like a pink gradient. That's what I would prefer. It keeps more of a Samsung style instead of going the opposite direction. But you know, at the end of the day, we'll see what they end up doing. Uh, the Dynamic Island so did you get a chance to see this, Tori? The Dynamic yeah, yeah, Island. I did. Yeah. Uh, you know, Apple has this on their new iPhones where at the top you can like put different activities. Mm -hmm. Like you can see sports scores and weather yeah. and stopwatch and alarm up there. Now Samsung's going to do that. It's not going to work exactly like that because, of course, Samsung doesn't have a big cutout in their yeah. phones. Mm -hmm. It's going to just go back up to the status bar. So you can just like flick it up to the status bar. Mm -hmm. You can see your music, your reminders, all that stuff. Yeah. What do you think about that as an idea overall? Uh, so like initially, at least I'm just so used to, and maybe in my opinion with just like my everyday life, like I'm just used to how I navigate the phone. Uh, I do feel like a lot of people, especially also to those Gen Z years where, um, you're kind of looking at as phones as being able to multitask a lot of things. And I feel like that's a direction that Samsung uh, tries to emphasize on and does really good in, in those innovation markets. So I really do feel like this could be a good thing. Like, obviously, it's going to be in beta, um, but I do think uh, this could be a thing that if they can really just find out a way to, uh, to you know, now that they have the fold, the flip um, and the S line, um, they can just kind of work it out to where uh, it's nice on those and they have a lot of innov innovation window. Um, I think it's going to be a good thing that people probably go for especially those gen zers yeah i'm actually not against it a lot of samsung fans are like oh we don't want this because it's emulating apple but you know i've never said that i don't want them to emulate apple on anything i said i want them to emulate apple on good ideas and not yeah. take apple's bad ideas some of the ideas they've taken have not been good ones but this idea is not a bad idea it depends on how they implement it they're not copying directly from apple because we're not going to have a massive cutout in our phone now if they did that that would honestly piss me off a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> if they put a massive pill-shaped cutout in the Galaxy S25 Ultra, I'm going to say that right now. If that ends up happening, we haven't seen any suggestions of that in leaks, but if that happens, I'm not going to be super happy about it. But if they just have it so that the live activities live in the status bar, mm -hmm. it could be good. Um, so far in the leaked videos that people have shown, though, the animations where you flick it up and down look really janky. They don't look good at all. Uh, they look very like stuttery, but it's a beta. It's actually an alpha right now. It's not even beta because, you know, it's not even being tested by the public. But, yeah. you know, it's getting ready to come out in beta maybe next week. Ice Universe said we might even get it next week, which would be crazy. But uh, since it's so early, I'm okay with it being a little janky. But if they get smooth animations and it looks useful, I think a lot of people would use it, like you said. Well, so then um, with that, because uh, as I was kind of looking through the comments in the videos, uh, several people were asking, should Samsung focus on the animations for the things that they're trying to roll out um, and not just rush these uh, things? I would like to see a little smoother. Yeah, Ice Universe said, he originally said it might come next week. And then he said, but Samsung shouldn't put it out next week because it's so buggy. Ice, mm -hmm. you know, our... Good friend, the most prolific Samsung leaker. He knows everything that's going on with One UI. So he said that it's so buggy, the versions he's seen, that he would suggest they not release it. Uh, I would not like to see a super buggy beta because obviously 
I'll be running it. And it's always nicer if it's a little smoother in the beginning. Yes. Because sure. when I'm making videos on all the features, I don't have to have apps force closing. And then I have to start restart my video 10, 15, 20 times <laughs> to get a video out to you guys. It's happened on previous betas before. It's always nicer if the first beta is somewhat somewhat nice and not everything is crashing. So I would prefer they perfect some of it a little bit. Of course, I'm being a little selfish because I'd also like to be able to finish all my content on these current devices that just came out mm-hmm. before I have to like make 20 videos on One UI 7 because that's a lot of work. But, uh, you know, I love it. But, I mean, it's, it's a lot back-to-back. I wish they would wait, make it a little more stable because why not? Um, they're not going to be rolling out the stable version until October, middle of October, end of October. So yeah. yeah, a couple months to beta test is fine. They don't need to push it out necessarily right now. Uh, we saw the new camera UI, which is where everything's on the bottom. They actually, mm-hmm. Chun Bai put a screenshot of that. We talked about it last week, but he actually showed a screenshot of what it looks like. Looks good. I mean, yeah. I don't have yeah, a problem no, with the camera it, UI. It looks good too. Uh, camera too. UI looks fine. It's, it's more one-handed, like we said last week, which is great. That goes along with One UI's goal of being one-handed. I think there's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with the camera UI. The new notifications on the lock screen don't look good, though. I, I Those look particularly terrible, in my opinion. Yeah, they, for me. Did you see those? The yeah, ones that are rounded notification? I, they look bad. I made a video on this today. I'm pulling it up again for Tori. Yeah. They just yeah, don't no, look no, good. I don't. I don't know if it's just the transparency of them, but uh, they kind of look like pixel icons. I know you haven't probably used a pixel. Or they look like Google's pixel icons. And, you know, it's just weird because... One UI 7 as a whole seems to have like design inspiration from like 20 places. It just seems like it's a huge cluster F. No, you know, pardon my French, but it's just like we took some stuff from Apple. We took some stuff from HyperOS. We took stuff from our own past OSs. We took some stuff from the Pixel launcher. And we're just like, we're going to just make all of that into like one one OS. And it just doesn't work great. The icons are the same way too. Like we talked about the icons. Some of them are like old school Samsung inspired. Some of them are like inspired by Apple or Hyper OS, like the gallery. Some of them are completely reinvented Samsung uh, icons, like the internet, which I love. I wish all of them were that style. But like some of them are flat. Some of them are 3D. Some of mm-hmm. them have different design philosophies. They just don't look like a cohesive product. And so yeah. One UI 7 right now, of course, it's an alpha. We're not saying it should be a finished product three months before it comes out. I'm not mm-hmm. saying that. But the design philosophy doesn't seem to be uh, a finished product. Uh, I saw the battery percent inside the... The battery percent inside the battery icon that looks okay. What do you think about the battery percent? Yeah, the uh, I did too. Um, a lot of the people uh, in the comments were saying that it's too small. They don't like it. This isn't a change that they want. Uh, I don't think I would mind it, uh, or even other consumers as well. Especially if they're also trying to convert those Apple people over as well. Because isn't that yeah, yeah. It is on, And also, it, the other thing about it is it is a usability improvement because. If you have the battery icon and the percent next to it, mm-hmm. then those two things side by side take up more space in the yeah, status bar. Yeah. So if you have the percentage inside of the icon, you're taking up less space in the status bar where you could have other things like your notification icons on mm-hmm. the left. Uh, and that's particularly important, as I was talking about earlier, with phones like the Fold 6 and the Flip 6. They're more narrow. Yeah, they like The cover so screen and the flip. So you need more space to show more notification icons. And I'm okay with that because it's a usability improvement. Like I said before, if we take some good ideas... And then they're for a real reason, like they're actually going to improve the overall experience, then I don't care. But I don't like just taking a bunch of ideas and like throwing them together. Like this is the new One UI crapshoot. Yeah, uh, right. Seven OS where we took <laughs> ideas from everywhere. We have no idea what the cohesive vision is. We're just going to throw all this stuff on there and see if it sticks. I don't like that approach. But if there's real usability reasons behind making a change, that's fine. Yeah, um, um, what about the tap? The st- oh, go ahead, Tori. What are you oh, well, I mean, I, I was just going to say, you know, as just like an average consumer um, or even someone who would even be interested in like getting the new phones or like upgrading, um, I I like the direction of focusing on the user, um, you know, comfort ability and, you know, focusing on the one uh, the one UI um, one handedness. Is that what you mean? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think. Is it's a good direction. I like it. Uh, I I feel like they're trying to find what fits for their flagship phones, um, you know. And I I think it's just like a growing pain that you know all Samsung uh, users are you know trying to find. But I think too, if Samsung is good about listening to their base, they'll be able to get to a solid place of um, things that will meet everyone at the same line. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that. Yeah, the, with the with the beta testing, it's all about getting feedback. So, 
people are going to give feedback about what they don't like. And the one nice thing I will say about Samsung that you can't say about other manufacturers, whether it's Apple or other Android manufacturers, is they do listen to their fans. When we test the beta, you know, there's been many betas that I participated in and myself and other enthusiasts and YouTubers, creators have given feedback in the beta because they have a nice forum for us to post feedback during the beta testing. We tell them we don't like something. They've changed it a lot of times. Oh, you know, they're not going to change the whole UI. But if there's one thing, you know, that's a small tweak mm-hmm. that they can make, they'll do it. You know, Apple is never going to do that. They're like, you're going to use what we put out and you better like it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Samsung is not that like way. <laughs> they're not like, you know, if we thought that this was something that people wanted, but it's a terrible idea and you pointed out why it's a terrible idea, don't make a change. Uh, what do you think about the stack, the stack task changer? Because that's going to be the default now where you've got single cards. Oh, wow. The current one is where you've got multi-view like this one, the mm-hmm. little ones. What do you think about that change? You know, um, I think I like the new one uh, just because then in that way I can kind of like move things around. Because sometimes depending on what your situation in terms of like where you're at, uh, you may be easier um, for certain ones. And so it, it'll be easier to kind of like be able to select which one that you will like just to kind of fit your current situation. Yeah. It's also phone. to, it also is what the iPhone has the stack one. It's also easier to see more information because mm-hmm. you have a bigger preview of each app versus yeah. the current one. Where you're like um, at a squint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where you don't necessarily have that. So it's, it's, it's an improvement from that. So again, since it's a usability improvement, it's okay with me. You'll be able to change it in GoodLock anyway. GoodLock mm-hmm. has always had the ability to do this uh, inside Home Up. They're not going to take that away. So yeah. it's like if you're a hardcore Samsung user, there's no reason to rage against the machine about this because you're still going to be able you're to go in there and <laughs> just switch it anytime you want. So mm-hmm. as long as it's stuff that I can modify in GoodLock, like I'm not going to throw a fit about it. If it's a usability change or a design change that I have to look at every day that just looks terrible, then I'm going to complain about that, especially mm-hmm. if it's something that affects the everyday use of the phone that I can't really modify. Yeah. But a lot of the things I can change in good luck. It's like, why am I going to get super angry about that? I mean, I can say I don't like it, but mm-hmm. if I can change the default, Samsung gives me the chance to customize it. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. That's fine. Yeah. I think that's mostly what I have to say about one UI seven. Um, we covered a lot of it last week as well. Once the beta comes out, we'll talk about it probably an entire episode. Cause uh, you know, I have a bunch of phones. Maybe I'll see if Tori can play around with it a little bit too. We can both experience it. Oh yeah, because I don't want Tori running this on his main phone because that'll be terrible. And <laughs> he'll probably really hate me if I ask him to run the beta on his main phone. He won't be able to uh, use Jeff, anything. What is this? <laughs> he won't be able to use any of his apps. So oh yeah, no, you don't want that. You got to do your banking and your other secure apps won't run on the beta. Let's talk a little bit about the app of the week and then get to the Q and A. Um, Google Keep Notes is the one I chose for the app of the week because this week I'm making a lot of longer videos. And in those videos, I always use Google Keep Notes, uh, which is Google's solution for note taking. Mm -hmm. A lot of people compare it to Samsung Notes, and I've also done that. I made a full video comparing the two as well. Um, But Google Keep Notes has some advantages because it syncs across all of your devices because you can use it on the web. uh, And and a little more cross-compatibility, I can use it on my Apple devices as well. Mm Um, it doesn't really have great S Pen support, of course. That's the advantage of Samsung okay. Notes. But have you ever looked at Keep Notes? Have you ever uh, seen it? Yeah, uh, I have. I think actually when I had my HTC, uh, I used Google Keep a lot because at that time I just got like um, a Google Chromebook. So I was like, oh, like it's nice for me to be able to write on like uh, my Google Chrome. And then I also have it on my phone, uh, you know, because back then I was like a college student. So it, it helped out a lot. We're just kind of keeping track of like the schedule and, and the things I needed to do by the time I got back to the dorm. Because, you know, you go through a lot throughout the day. But what I really appreciated was that you could color code like the yeah. notes. You can see I have that in my mm-hmm. pen notes. You can also pen stuff to the top, which I yeah. always do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that feature. Yeah. So, and you can also put these little check boxes. People always ask about this in my videos, like, because as I do my longer videos, like my tutorials, I make a keep note and I keep it open in multi window and I open it and I check off the items as I go. Mm -hmm. Just because, like I said before, I don't script my videos. Like, I'm doing everything Mm -hmm. off the cuff. So, I just write down a general outline. I'm just checking stuff off as I go. So, you can tell, like, I'm. I'm not giving you any BS because it's 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 just <laughs> off the cuff what I think are and, and also you know I know most of the tutorials that I've done a lot of times by heart because I always am spending time with the phone before I make the videos. Mm-hmm. I don't need a script because I mean I've already spent so much time playing with it before I make a video on it anyway. Um, but people always ask me about this and, and it's great it has sharing. It's got rich link previews, so if you paste a link from the web, 
It'll give you a preview of the link. Like oh, I've yeah. got some links wow, from cool. various websites. You can see what that actually is. You can insert drawings. Mm -hmm. So it does work with the S Pen, but it's not as good, obviously, as Samsung Notes. It's got a lot of advanced integration with the S Pen because it is a Samsung product, Samsung Notes. This is not. Um, but Keep Notes is great for sharing. You can share with various people. You get reminders. Um, you, there's a bunch of different themes you can get, too, for, for Keep Notes in addition to color coding uh, the actual notes, as Tori said before. And uh, you can also add recordings, voice recordings, or images, or photos directly uh, from there. It's got an archiving system, which you can use for the notes. And like I said, it syncs to your Google account, which makes it particularly yeah, it useful. Um, so I highly recommend trying it if you are a Samsung Notes user, just to compare it, because why not? I mean, even if you're an everyday user, it might work better for you if you have multiple devices that aren't all Samsung. Like, mm -hmm. maybe use a Samsung phone, but you have an iPad and you have a Windows PC. Some people, a lot of people are in that camp because the iPad is a great tablet and Windows PCs, not all of them are made by Samsung. Yeah. Uh, the one I have is the Galaxy Book 4 Edge, so I can use Samsung Notes on there. Uh, but some people may not be using Samsung Notes if they have like an HP. They may not, that might not be their default. So this might be something they want to try and just see if it works for you. And I use it a lot of my videos, like I said, with tutorials. And I find it's great just for syncing it cross-platform. So mm -hmm. I want to bring it to people's attention as always. It'll be in the show notes. I'm curious if our listeners have some suggestions for apps of the week that we can try. Because, of course, I'm talking about the ones that I use all the time. But I'd like to get some more adventurous ones that me and Tori can try that we don't know about. Yeah, for sure. So if you guys have apps of the week, put them over on Twitter. Put them on Facebook. Um, send us a text message because there's a mm -hmm. link in the show notes to send a text message directly to the show or email us. Uh, Jeff at SammyGuru.com. I got to get Tori a Sammy Guru email so you can yeah. email him too. I'll get him on an at Sammy Guru domain at some point too so you can email us and let us know what apps you want us to talk about because we'll try some apps and give them a shot i like trying new apps and i probably yeah, don't too. do it as often as i used to but i would love to start doing it again uh q a we got three today that i highlighted uh they asked what case do we use on our phones so i use a bunch of them but i'll let tori go what case are you using on your s22 ultra uh, yeah, uh, currently I'm using the uh, Samsung uh, Flip Kick uh, stand. Kickstand case. Or, 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 yeah, uh, Kickstand case. Uh, I love it um, just because, you know, like I have Netflix, Hulu. I'm always like trying to during lunch uh, when I have a break, uh, be able to just watch something while I eat something and just kind of like decompress um, a little bit. And so it's just really nice to have that case is very durable. Um, uh, the only thing about that case is like, you know, it gets dirty, like over time. Cause it's clear plastic. And also we live in Arizona. The sun does some damage to it as well. Um, if it's, you know, out for extended periods of time, uh, but overall it's a really good case. I do like the Samsung case. Yeah. So their kickstand case is pretty good. Samsung's first party cases sometimes can be hit or miss. So sometimes they make some great ones. Sometimes they make some terrible ones. I remember back for the Z Fold 4, which is when I first came back to doing YouTube full-time after COVID because I took some time off during COVID. They made a case for the Z Fold 4 that was their original S Pen type case for the Z Fold 4. It was absolutely terrible. Like it, it You couldn't even open it without the S Pen falling off the back. Oh, like, wow. Well, I didn't know sometimes <laughs> how they don't quality control some of their first-party cases, but that kickstand case that they've made for a couple of generations now, usually once they make the case for a couple of years, it gets to a point where it's good. But then for some reason, Samsung's like, hey, let's just get rid of all that stuff that we've made that's working so many years and let's just make different cases this year. No, I don't bad. know why they do that. Like, why <laughs> <Bad>. <laughs> they, they do that like every three or four years, maybe two or three years. They're like, yeah, this case is great. People love it. We've been doing it for the S22, S23, S24. Should we make it for the S25? Nah, we shouldn't do that. People mm, really like it. It's reliable. Loss. It serves a purpose. We sell a lot of them. There's no complaints. Don't don't make any more of those. That sounds like a bad idea. It is a bad Why idea. Why do they do that? I mean, I, it, it, if people like this case, then just keep making it. They they had a case like the Clearview SU cover for a while that people liked a lot, and they had perfected it. It had some issues in the beginning. It's actually one of the cases that I made uh, my my first videos on that has like a million views. The one for the S6. They made it for like four or five years, and it perfected it. And then one year, they're just like, ah, no, I'm not gonna do that anymore. We're gonna start doing LED covers. And they're not as quite as good. They didn't have yeah, quite no, the no, same no. functionality. Um, I use a lot of different cases. My favorite ones are Urban Armor Gear for the S24 Ultra, um, Taka, uh, Kadabe, Magback. These are some of the cases I use. Um, and then on the Fold 6, I currently have 
the Binks Airmed Fiber. I really like this case. I highly recommend it for one reason. It does not have a front plate. I hate fold cases that have the front plate. 99% of them do. You have to put a front plate around the front. Uh, it has an uh. adhesive, and it makes it harder to use the phone. It's not as ergonomic. This one only has a back plate and then a cover for the hinge. Yeah, no, I where you like can see it. Cover. It looks really nice. Yeah, And it's nice and really thin. Nice. It doesn't add a lot of bulk because, because the fold is already pretty thick. I don't want to make it extra thick with another case. So I highly recommend Banks Armor. I'll drop a link to some of these in the show notes as well. We're going to do some case roundups on the website um, with our new writer who's joining. He's going to make a lot of case posts because I think a lot of people are interested in that. So we'll have some buying guides for like the fold, the flip, the S line, all that kind of stuff. Um, we kind of answered the second one earlier, but we can kind of eventually mention it again. Which Apple features do we think Samsung should consider borrowing? Uh, I like the, the live activities, the dynamic island, quote unquote, even though it's not the same implementation. I like mm-hmm. it. What do you think, Dory? Um, I mean, I like that one too. Uh, I mean, overall, um, you like I, the camera UI at the bottom, right? I mean, the best basically. I do like the camera UI, uh, and I think that would probably be like my only real thing that I'm really interested in because uh, when I currently look at the camera, like sometimes I just get a little overwhelmed with like because I have like the bar stuff at the top, like to to like kind of click through and stuff now and navigate when like I, I would like a little bit more streamlined process where I don't have to like kind of go and use two hands, especially if I'm trying to take a picture in the moment. Yeah. I mean, those are two things I think that are great. The live activities is really cool. Um, the camera UI being at the bottom is a really good idea. I think as long as it's something that improves the usability, yeah. even if it looks similar to Apple, I'm not as against it. If it improves the usability and makes the product better, mm-hmm. just like I said, with the buds three pro, they look like the AirPods, but they improve the usability because the old buds had terrible touch controls. Yeah. Samsung's always had better audio than Apple, and now they improve the usability. They're, they're, their buds are like light years ahead of Apple. Like there's some mm-hmm. places where Samsung is way ahead of Apple, and with the buds, like the, the AirPods are just garbage compared to them. I'll probably make a video uh, quickly talking about comparing those two because people love Apple versus Samsung comparisons. Yeah, it brings do. all the haters out, and they get <laughs> a lot do. of views. You know, I got to go out there and do some clickbaiting, get some views from people who are like, this guy, he thinks he knows how good the AirPods are. He probably doesn't even own any AirPods. When I have the AirPods in the video, I'm sitting there like in my hand. They're like, "This guy doesn't own AirPods." I'm like, "They're they're right here." What are you yeah, talking? yeah, yeah. They're, or they're like, people just Jeff, go to the do com- your research, and you're yeah. like, "I I am." People <laughs> just go to the comments and start posting stuff without even watching the video most of the time. They're like, I, you know, the thumbnail just says, you know, Galaxy Buds Three Pro are better than the AirPods, and they're just like, "This guy doesn't have any AirPods," but the video is like me holding both pairs, one pair of AirPods, one pair of Buds. I just still don't get that, but whatever. Um, and then the last question, which is a question people are just asking in general in a lot of different socials. We just wrapped up the Z Fold 6, Z Flip 6 Mystery Box program. In fact, they're packing some out right outside the door yeah, here in yeah. the other office here. Uh, those are all going to UPS this weekend. We've got some out yesterday. Some are going out today, Friday the 26th, and some are going out tomorrow. Um, people are asking, are the Galaxy S25 Ultra Box is going to start soon? And the answer is yes. I already put up the page for early notifications for the S25 Ultra Mystery Boxes, you can sign up. Uh, the link will be in the show notes. Put in your phone number and or your email. You'll get the links on launch day. It's going to be in January. We always start early. Yeah. It's like six months away. But you'll get your links on launch day to order. You'll get the Mystery Box verification form to put in your address to get your Mystery Box if you use our link. I'm coming up some, with some ways this time to make sure we don't have link problems. I want to promise people, if you go through the Mystery Box links this time, Things are going to work because I have some ideas this time that should make this, you know, a fail, fail proof, you know, kind of deal. <laughs> I never want to say guarantee, but I'm really working hard on my end and also going to work with Samsung's affiliate people to make sure it doesn't happen again because it was a real disaster on the foldable launch, not only for me, but for you guys too. And I feel yeah. bad because I get you guys the early links and you want to order right away to get your box. And not everyone was able to do that. And I, I'm disappointed about that. So I'm working very hard on the administrative side to try to remedy that problem. So next week, we'll be back with video. Are you excited about video, Tori? Oh, I am really excited. People finally get to see our beautiful faces on video. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to work on lining up some guests as well uh, as we start going on the video. We should have more guests. I already got like two or three people who are interested in coming on. A couple of them we have to work out time zone issues with because the time zones are a little tricky, but we will figure that out. Um, And we're going to have video not only of our faces, but also top-down video 
of any products we want to talk about. So you guys will be able to see all the cool stuff that mm-hmm. we're discussing uh, as we go through the podcast. So that should be a very, very exciting thing. And then I've also got someone who's working on a little bit of intro and outro music. Um, I don't want to promise that for next week, but we should have it. That way at the end, it won't just be like, bye. You know? <laughs> or like I said last week, stay classy Samsung fans. But you yeah, know, I don't want to lift, lift it from Ron Burgundy. You know, I just like... So someone suggested that we use stand up Samsung Knights, but that's Flossie Carter's thing. I'm not going to steal his thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, mean I mean, Flossie Carter, he's a good, you know, I've talked to him many times. He's a great creator, and I don't want to steal his catchphrase. He's not copyrighted. I mean, Samsung community calls themselves Samsung Knights in general because he said that. And I consider myself a Samsung Knight, but I'm not going to steal that for the podcast. So we got to come up with something mm-hmm. better. Like, Samsung Guru Maniacs. Yeah. You know, like Hulkamania. <laughs> Samsung Guru Mania is running wild. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So if you guys have some ideas listening to the show, uh, let us know what you think about that. Like yes, what should please. we do for the outro or yes, please. what we should call the listeners, our enthusiast audience. So uh, we'll see you guys next week and uh, everybody have a good one. Yeah.